what does one degree for every 69 miles what does that what image does that mentally conjure up because it's it's geometric it's a geometric statement so what does that geometric picture look like i don't want to put a downer on it uh, you do only have an angle and as we all know you can do fuck all with an angle hello i'm back again to help bev from try thinking understand what you can do with an angle with the help of this geometry software we'll see how an angle to a star translates to the surface distance between the observer and the ground position of a star but before we go any further let me explain some of the items that we've got on view We'll start with the ball's radius of 39.59 miles. This is the observer. This is the ground position of the star, which is very local, and it's only a few thousand miles above the surface. The coordinates for both of these are here. The observer's angles to the star are over here. The purple, this is the elevation angle. The green is the co-altitude. This black line shows the shortest surface path between the observer and the GP, and that's this distance over here. And this number tells us how many miles there are for each degree of co-altitude. And this co-altitude is the angle that we're after because it's this angle, together with the radius, that tells us how far away we are from the GP of the star that we're looking at. So why are we getting 38 miles per degree? Surely this should be 69. So that 69 miles, what's that look like? Well, I'm glad you asked Bev, because the other thing that we rely on for this celestial navigation to work is parallel light rays. And we're never gonna get parallel light from a star that's this close. So let's move it away a few hundred light years. And now that the star distance is much further away, we now get the familiar 69.1 miles per degree. It looks like a triangle, right? No, it's, it's three lines, isn't it? In case there's any uncertainty, let me explain these lines. This red line, this is a vertical line from the GP to the star. This dark line, this is a vertical line from the observer to their zenith. And this blue line, this is a line of sight from the observer to the star. Using this line of sight gives us the altitude angle and the co-altitude angle. It doesn't matter which we get first, either gives us the other as the complementary and that's just another way of saying that they add up to 90 degrees. People I've I talked to that. did have a different understanding because I don't think anybody's ever showed them the simple geometric version of how this works. Does that same angle measurement carry on to the land? That's where, that's where it was initially measured, 69 miles. Well, what I'm saying is like, if you go east and west, you still come up with the same angle don't you? I don't know. You have to go away and towards it. That's how the story goes. As you can see, 69 miles per degree isn't limited to a meridian line. And because we're dealing with the distance between coordinates, it doesn't matter if the observer is on a mountaintop and the GP is out at sea. In order for you to get me into that next part, I have to know what the fuck I'm doing with an angle. Because I even when I know here, that, right, you travel 69 miles and uh, you can measure an angle change one degree. Um, what does that mean? I find myself here at 30 degrees north on the prime meridian. And let's say that the north star is fixed directly above the north pole. When I travel north by 69.1 miles, the co-altitude angle will have reduced by one degree. Hence, 69.1 miles per degree. 
I've never known anybody that keeps measuring 69 miles as they're going towards it and eventually ends up with the light in the sky above the red. And then they can keep going 69 miles and it's, it, it starts dropping in the opposite direction. I don't, don't know of where that occurs. So how do I know that this arc length equals this value? If I take 43 degrees and convert that to radians, so times pi divided by 180, and then multiply that by the radius, that should give me 2,971.2. And that's this value here. I've talked about this, the two people so far, well, today. And both of them had a different idea of what the geometric picture looks like, but was sort of unable to, to show what the geometric picture would have looked like. I can't see the point in measuring angles to lights in the sky. Sorry, that was bugging me. That shouldn't say 180, that's 90. So the only thing left to talk about now really is the circle of equal altitude. And if I've measured my co-altitude angle to be 27.5 degrees, then I can multiply that by 69. And I'll know that I'm about 1900 miles away from the GP. And that's somewhere along the circle. And this is a circle. You could draw your own simply by pinning one end of a length of string to anywhere on a ball while wrapping the other end around a crayon. Before you eat the crayon, pull the string tight and draw yourself a circle. Anyway, that'll do for this video. I hope you found this geometry interesting and if you want to see the script, I'll leave a copy on the GeoGebra website for you to explore. If you're feeling generous, hit those like and subscribe buttons. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you later.